everybody who I sell the boat to because they'll come back and they'll, they'll complain. So I want to make vehicles so that they are as gentle on the server as possible. And in the case of a vehicle, uh, well, in the case, say, of making a regular object, uh, people know things like keep the primp count down and use mesh nowadays. But in the case of a vehicle, there are uh, there are other things you want, want, want to, to come uh, back think about. And Here's a little bit of history again, that when Second Life first uh, added vehicles, you to, the, to make life easier on the physics engine, they said vehicles are not allowed to have more than 31 primps. And then they, they upped that to 32 plus uh, one uh, passenger. And if you wanted more passengers, you, I, I think you had to uh, take some prims out to make room for them. And then they added a feature, which is uh, you're, you're allowed, and you guys uh, probably know about this, uh, where you could click on, on a single prim and let's see if I can find... This boat, uh, this big uh, sailboat has sails. And if I paint them white, um, that is not the sails. How do I know when I have touched just a sail? It'll be transparent. That's how I'll know. Oh, I need to. Uh, Edit link. There we go. So um, if I change this sail to uh, to plywood, and this is one of the things you learn uh, by tearing apart a um, a build by Arcadia Asylum. This 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 uh, build has exactly 32 prims. So it was obviously built in Second Life during that period of time when 32 was the max. And then it has all the sails as a single sculpt so that with a single call in a script, you can make them transparent and say the sails are raised. And then you make them uh, visible and uh, you can say the sails are, 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 let's see, the sails are raised so you can sail and then they're lowered so that uh, the, the ship slows down and stops. So it's been, it's been carefully designed to be a scripted vehicle and it's been carefully designed to be used as a vehicle in Second Life with the, the, the total number of prims being so small, but it is um, something that you should do, and I suspect that Arcady knew this, but this vehicle or th this uh, build has been copied and copied and copied forever, and you're all welcome to grab a copy because Arcady was a generous as well as a genius, and she gave all this stuff away, and some of us are still learning from uh, builds like this that she made long ago. But uh, this... Uh, 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 vehicle should have had lots of the parts uh, phantom. So I'm going to go into the um, the the object uh, uh, um, panel in the in the build dialog, and uh, and he's supposed to let me. He's not letting me set the the phantom. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm still picking textures. If I close that, edit linked. Do I have to select face? No. Move. <sighs> I am allowed to edit this, I assume. You must select an entire object. I don't want to set permissions. I want to make oh, what, what I want. Uh, this is the, the feature that was added after the 32 prim limit, that in features they added the ability that you could take just the sales and you could mark them as, as uh, physics type none. And that means instead of making the whole object phantom, which was the only option before this, I can click on the, uh, the the sails and make them phantom, and then I can click on the mast, and I can make it it uh, a none, which is the same as phantom, and I could click on a whole bunch of other parts that um, let's see the uh, these ropes uh, can probably be be none, and the idea here is that in the case of a vehicle, 
Um, every part of, of a vehicle that is marked as, as physics type none, that means the physics engine doesn't have to deal with them. Now this boat is a big complicated object with 32 different uh, prims in it. And if the physics engine had to worry about, well, what happens if you run into that tree over there? Well, what happens if, uh, well, if a cannonball flies through here, uh, actually that's something you might want it to, to detect. But by making everything you possibly can physics type none, you make the job of the physics engine easier and easier and easier. And as a matter of fact, um, in, uh, in my case, when I build a boat like uh, this, um, this uh, scow over here, um, you can see this on my screen, but you can't see it uh, anywhere else. If I, if I click on any part of this, the sail is physics type none. The, um, the, 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 the fore and aft sail, the, the jib is physics type none. There's a big um, uh, um, uh, spinnaker up there that's also physics type none. And as a matter of fact, the mast is physics type none. And it's hard to tell, but uh, other parts of the boat, even the rudders, uh, are part of a, a mesh, and they're physics type none. And as a matter of fact, the only part of this whole boat that is uh, not physics type none, and let's see if I can uh, find it. <laughs> um, Oh, and that is here. If I if I say if I don't edit linked, it's selected. Ah, okay. Physics type prim. I got it there, and I didn't uh, expect it. So edit li linked. If I click in the. There we go. I grabbed it. It uh, no, that's physics type none. Uh, none, none, none. There. And I, I managed to grab it. It should be the root prim. And so while I have the opportunity, I'm going to change it to, uh, to blank texture. The only part of this boat that is in physics, yeah, well, it also has the engine in it, it, uh, uh, it uh, which, which means that um, it be, it's also the root prim, and that means that uh, since it's uh, centered around the, uh, the water line, uh, when the boat rotates, it's going to rotate around the center of this object, which is kind of a natural place for the boat uh, to rotate. And it creates a surface that you can walk on uh, so that if I stand on the boat, I don't fall through it and sink to the bottom. And in the case of some boats, I'll make this taller so that it can uh, detect cannons. So if you shoot at the boat, uh, this is the only part of the boat that, uh, that the physics engine uh, cares about, and it's the only part that a cannon will hit, and so on and so forth. At any rate, uh, also... An interesting thing about the physics engine is uh, that I learned from Ubit, the guy whose whose uh, name uh, U Bit uh, 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 named our the physics engine that uh, is called U B O D E. Um, Ubit says that the physics code in the server has special purpose code in it to um, to deal with cubes and spheres, and if you give it a mesh object. It has to actually look at all of the, the vertexes in the mesh object to decide how to, how to collide with it. And that makes uh, the phys physics engine run slower on mesh uh, physical mes mesh objects. And also, when mesh objects move, every time the sail rotates, the physics engine has to recalculate the physics shape. And so another good reason for making the, uh, the, the sails uh, uh, phantom is that when objects move or change size, uh, the physics engine has to recalculate uh, their shape in order to tell if, if cannonballs can run into them. And, but, because there's special purpose code for 
cubes, even though cubes are very inefficient compared to mesh objects, like if I could make a mesh cube and it would have fewer uh, uh, vertexes because uh, a prim uh, system uh, cube has like uh, 200 vertexes in it in order to support uh, um, uh, torturing it, cutting holes in it and, and tapering it and all those other, other uh, twisting it. Those require extra vertexes, so those vertexes are always there, whether you're using them or not. So uh, system cubes are rather inefficient, but they're super efficient in the physics engine because they they uh, all the physics engine needs to know is how long it is, how tall it is, and how wide it is, and it can determine whether it collides with anything. And it turns out the physics engine has special purpose code for spheres because all the physics engine needs to remember is where the center is and, and what the radius is, although it has three radii, of course, making it a little bit more complicated. But but you, 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 you can understand that determining where uh, a sphere bumps into something is a lot easier than some random object e that you that you you brought in as a mesh. These are um, are things that you want to think about when you're making uh, a physics object. And Arcadia Asylum, 20 years later, is still teaching us lessons because this boat it has 32 prims, and some of them are transparent. So why did she waste time um, with these extra prims? I'm not sure I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll be able to tell by the, um, by the, the texture, it'll be transparent. So this boat is full of prims that are transparent and I have to click around to find them all because uh, apparently I have some um, setting that is different than the default. And what are all of these transparent prims for? How come I have? Yes, they're, they're for collision. He says I have multiple. There we go. Texture uh, blank. Uh, oh, that's a door. So she has the door here for for closing the um, up this uh, this room up here. And um, and she has a cube that um, that has uh, a hole cut through it t to make the empty space in the room. Well, but. Uh, a cube can have a, um, a a hole through it, but it doesn't have uh, a, a, a front and a back. So, in other words, if you were inside this room and you walked backwards out the 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 uh, to the back of the room, you could walk through the back wall and and fall out of the boat. Man overboard! Uh, but she was she was working with the tools that she had, and the tools that she had were. The tortured prims, and so she she took uh, a bunch of prims. I think there's like six of them, and she made a model of the boat out of just those prims, made those physical, and, and made <coughs> everything else in the boat phantom. And then, by uh, you could walk. Uh, it's hard to tell, but this front prim is actually a half of a cube, so you can walk around on the deck here, and then the sides of the cube prevent you from walking off the edge when you're walking around out here. So there's there's a physics model inside this boat that was m built by a genius at making things in Second Life to, to uh, allow this boat to have a kind of a useful physics model that you could stand on when the boat was just sitting around, and but that didn't bog down the physics engine, so everything else could be, uh, could be phantom. So that's a couple of issues. Now, now these aren't cu uh, simple cubes, so uh, they, they make the physics engine kind of di more difficult. But it also means you can hit all these parts of the boat with cannon, and this boat is more fun in a battle. Um, another thing that yeah. you, you might want to, well, that, that I highly recommend, if you look at this boat, and you click on on it without selecting one of the uh, the links. 
we're selecting essentially the root prim now. And you'll notice that um, if, I, if I go into uh, world coordinates and I go into local coordinates, the red um, uh, arrow, the x direction, is pointing in the, po in the forward direction of the boat. Mm. And it, turn it turns out this is the default for vehicles in Second Life, that you want to build your boat so that when you uh, when you uh, go into the, uh, uh, the 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 build dialog and you tell them to rotate to zero zero zero, the bow of the boat or the airplane or the the, the front of the car or or whatever, uh, the front end of your vehicle should be pointing east. And if you go and and you you put your uh, dial your build dialog in local coordinate mode. It should, uh, and you rotate it to zero, zero, zero. It should be pointing in the same direction, whether you're in world coordinates or local coordinates. And, and there, the purists will tell you, ah, that's not necessary. If you look at the scripting uh, um, documentation in the wiki, they'll say, oh, there's a call to set which direction is forward on your vehicle. Yeah, but once you set that, it is your responsibility to keep the coordinate system organized, and you need to have a very good understanding of rotations. So everybody raise your hand if you like doing uh, scripting and doing math in rotations, which are all also called quaternions in mathematics. So how many people here love quaternions? Uh, the hands are too fluffy, Dad. <laughs> yeah, the answer is yes, making... Not. Like script, unless I, unless it's got a place where you can set the rotation, then I'm okay with it. Well, okay, but then somebody else wrote that script, and I predict that the person who wrote that script did not have a, a good understanding of rotations because hardly anybody does. And I have, uh, I'd like to brag and say I have a pretty good understanding of rotations, but building a vehicle that doesn't go forward in the X direction is still a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure whatever vehicle you get, that its coordinate system always has X going forward and Z pointing up. Like furnishing Just, a house that's on that's a mango or something, right? <laughs> yeah, now, Except more now a, f <laughs> a fun thing to do uh, is, is and, and, I, and I recommended this for this class, I was thinking that Mike might bring a boat but uh, I've seen people uh, br to a scripting class about building vehicles bring some wonderful yacht or some motorboat that they found on CG Trader or one of those free, free sites. And they say, I want to make this boat go. Uh, and there's a bunch of reasons why uh, you, you should be very careful bringing mesh in from other places. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. But one of the things that can go wrong is the coordinate system is, is, is all wrong. And it can be so wrong that I've had people bring in boats, and when they put them in the water, and, and I say, now rotate them to zero, 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 the boat pointed off in some screwy direction. I mean, if it pointed, you know, uh, uh, north or south or east or, or west, I'd say, well, that makes sense. If it pointed straight up or straight down, that would kind of make sense. But to have it point off where it points, you know, 40 degrees east and 20 degrees uh, up, and it's like just doesn't make any sense at all. Hmm. that uh, objects can come in from outside that have really screwy coordinate systems. And so, like the free scripts, a lot of those free mesh are also uh, worth a whole lot less than you paid for them. Uh, mm -hmm. Even even people have, have paid for, for, for mesh and then discovered that they had a screwy coordinate system. And of course- But you can fix that. Yes, in Blender. You <laughs> can fix it in Blender. And therefore, you have to go to Mike's Blender class, which was also today, and you already missed it. <laughs> and, and actually, if you found some motorboat that you really wanted to, uh, uh, to turn in, into a useful uh, a working boat here, um, you could bring it to, to Mike's class, or I have a class in Discovery Grid on Wednesday, and we would be happy to look at it with you and, and tell you everything that's wrong with it and why and what you have to do to fix it to get it working uh, uh, in world. There are other things that can go wrong with mesh, like they can have too many materials. They can have a, 
Uh, uh, they can have uh, too many objects. They can have the coordinate system messed up. Uh, there's all, they can have too many textures. There's a lot of things that, that some people do out there. I would recommend that if you're looking for uh, a mesh that you wanted to use in here, you look for, for mesh that say they are game ready. And that typically means that they they don't they, they have uh, uh, they were they were made efficiently with very few vertices and very few triangles, so that uh, they don't bog down the physics engine or even the the viewer to draw them. And they'll uh, they'll they'll uh, work faster or they'll 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 cause less lag when you get them uh, in world. Here's a sailboat I made from scratch in Blender. And if you come to my classes, you can learn how to build like this too. <laughs> um, and so I've been meaning for the longest time to finish this, and uh, in your get spare it. Time. Yeah, in my voluminous spare time. So. It's nice, Mike. Thank you. This is actually a Shock Forty sailboat, which is a real sailboat in the real world that a friend of mine owns one of the few examples of wow. and uh he it's it, it doesn't have the keel on it right now but it's got a unique keel that pivots like a door so that the 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 key the purpose of a keel of course is it provides weight in the center line um. to 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 uh basically act as a counterbalance to the force being put on the sails from the wind so that the sailboat doesn't tip over. It's not the weight so much as it flies underwater and, and produces lift in the opposite direction that the sail is trying to tip the boat over. Well, that too. But there's a reason <laughs> that they usually build the keels out of either lead or steel rather than oh, They fill wood. them with lead when they're done, yeah. yeah. But then when you come into harbor in shallow water, you want to raise it. Some, uh, some sailboats allow you to raise them so you can fit in a, in a cheaper mo moorage. Right. So this has a pivoting keel. Now, some keels will pivot, but what they do is they pivot forward and back so that it folds up into the hull. So you can do what kayaker does. You can come in and to a very shallow anchorage and not run aground. Whereas this has a racing keel, so it's a very long keel, and it pivots side to side, so that when the when the sailboat tips over one way or the other, the keel pivots in the opposite direction to provide greater, um, what's the proper term, kayaker moment arm for uh, basically more the gravity on the mass of the ballast at the tip of the keel weighs the the uh, hull down and and of course the wing feature it lets it put create more down force so that it counterbalances the wind uh, force against the sail and so this allows you to have a much bigger sail on your boat and of course if you have a much bigger sail on your boat you catch more wind and you can go much faster and so for this reason my friend wins all the sail the the sailboat uh, private yacht races along the Texas Gulf Coast, even against much bigger sailboats, and uh, so I I made this for him, but he has not had any interest in coming into virtual worlds. <laughs> so I'm, I intend to to uh, script this for myself and to put it on the market when I'm done with it. So I have uh, these colored boxes over here that have uh, scripts in them. They should give you uh, a, a script. And uh, the purple box uh, has a script that, uh, that, that runs through every prim in your build and sets them all to none. And then it's up to you to find the root prim and set it back to, uh, to physics type uh, uh, prim again. Uh, uh, because I find that, especially in a big build like that, uh, that uh, Arcadia Asylum ship, um, go finding every prim and setting them to none is the hard part. I I so f I want so few of the prims in my build to be uh, 
to be to not be prim that it's easier to set them all to prim and then find the ones you want to 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 do the opposite with instead of the reverse finding that last little prim in the corner that you forgot about and setting it to uh, to none instead set them all and uh, and then uh, the yellow box has a script in it that uh, that runs through every oh sorry that that runs uh, through every prim in your build. So you drop this in in a boat that you're uh, you're you're planning on turning into into a vehicle, and it tells you which prim is uh, is is which physics type. And so you can you can test and see did I do it right by by dropping this prim in or resetting it once it's in there, and it will tell you uh, if you did a good job of making most of your prims physics type none. Uh, and uh, and then of course when you're when you're done building your boat you want to take these scripts out because they're uh, just excess baggage but they're useful uh, at at, uh, at at while you're uh, while you're working on on boats and then physics cost is an interesting thing as you may or may not know if depending on what uh, grid you go to when you upload uh, an object uh, the system is going to tell you what the land impact of the object is. And uh, also, if you let's see, if I look at that big, at that big boat of Arcades, uh, there is a a way here to ask for more information about the the land impact of an object. See, earlier it was telling me how many one object, uh, uh, 32 prims, and uh, and then it tells you a bunch of weights. It says the download weight is 32 because there's 32. Uh, 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 prims. It tells me the physics cost is 2.9, but nobody knows. Well, I assume some people know, but it, it's it's kind of uh, a state secret. And when you ask Ubit how is physics uh, cost weight calculated, he says, "Oh, go read the source code yourself. I don't remember." <laughs> and and it has a number here, which is the uh, uh, the display. I think the dis display is either the number of vertices in the to in the whole build. Or it's the the number of triangles, which might be twice the number of uh, of uh, vertices in the case of a sculpty. And and if you take this same object and you load it uh, into uh, Kitely, it might get a different number. For example, in Second Life, uh, the land impact of mesh is calculated uh, in some magical way that 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 causes the land impact to be very high. So that they can charge you more for uploading all your objects, oh, and uh, yeah. in Kitely, it's ca it's calculated a different way. They they rewrote how the server calculates land impact so that mesh always counts as a single prim. And then in uh, the rest of OpenSim, there's a different formula, and nobody knows how all these formulas work. So I wrote my own formula, and the idea of this uh, physics cost is. It, it, it isn't uh, it doesn't ha a script it doesn't have the ability to uh, to ask uh, how many vertices there are in a mesh but it can tell if you have a mesh and so it, it just calculates that I forget what I did it cal it calculates that as three prims it calculates sculpties as two prims it calculates all system prims as one prim and it tells you how many well it, it basically counts up how many physical prims there are in in your vehicle and and it gives you a cost and if you drop this in uh, in some vehicle like that that boat of arcades it would give you a, a high number right now and then as you as you go through your build and you change uh, things that that don't need to be uh, 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 physical into physics type none the physics cost would get low and my goal is always to make the physics cost 1.0 because that means the root prim is a um, is a physical prim and everything else uh, is not and let me show you one more example and then I'm gonna say class is dismissed today because we're like an hour over Oh no! I, actually, uh, uh, we're not. We're right on time, so I'll, I'll keep going. I can go over. Uh, pirate gunboat. Let's see if I can find one. Pirate have one boat. Yeah. Yeah. This boat is is interesting. That I wanted. Uh, I I didn't want. I I wanted to be able to walk in the bottom of the boat. So that if I st if I stood in it, I would I would be standing on the floorboards. 
And so if I, if I put just a, a, a cube, a slab underneath it, then I would turn and I would walk uh, uh, through the walls and I would uh, fall uh, into the water. And so I wanted the, the side of the boat to have sides. And what I decided to do in the end was I built a special, you know, the texture will tell me, I built a special, here we go, um, mesh that I made myself that uh, has this sort of faceted bathtub shape. And now I'm going to tear this boat apart so it's no good anymore. So this is a very simple shape. It, it, I didn't bother to make it smooth. It has big triangles, but the physics engine can see it. And Mike will tell you, because I taught it to him. He, I taught him everything he knows, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. I taught him that uh, a physics shape doesn't have to be solidified like this. So you'll see this, this boat has a thickness. It's like, uh, you know, 10 centimeters thick. Well, that's not necessary. You can make a physics model out of a single sheet of, of pixels, a single um, uh, triangle, and then the physics engine, will you'll bump into it coming from one side and you'll bump into it coming from the other side, which is not true of the visible part of an object where you can only see a triangle from one side, and if you turn it around, you can't see the other side. But in the case of physics, you don't need to have two triangles, one on either side, to make something solid. You just need a single sheet. And I didn't know that when I made this, and I learned it afterwards. So this is another example of a way to make a physics model for an object. You make it a mesh object, and then you hide that inside your object as a transparent uh, part of the build. And then that becomes the physics, uh, the, the root prim, and it becomes the, the prim that has the, the script in it that, uh, that runs everything else. So we've gone through a lot, yeah. and uh, should I keep uh, should I keep talking, or is that enough information for everyone for one day? I'm okay with either choice. Yeah. <laughs> and you uh, managed to stay here for the whole class, uh, uh, Mike McHugh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. So, uh, bye. bye. So, should I keep talking to everybody else? It's time for me. <laughs>